Every 200 hours, we need to inspect them, check them, and if worn excessively, we need to change them. I am talking about the crankshaft bearings. In today's episode, we will go as deep as we can in the engine and open everything to be able to replace those bearings. Let's get into it. Hi there, my name is Stefan. Welcome back to the Paramotor engine maintenance series. As I told you before, today we will go as deep as we can into the engine and we will change the crankshaft bearings. For doing that, we will need to get rid of every single accessory and part around the engine block. So we will need to remove cylinders, exhaust, the pull starter and everything. But for that, we have videos for every single part, how to remove, inspect and reinstall it. So if you're not sure about any of the operations please check the description down below and i'm sure that you will find a video that will suit your needs so let's get into it fast forward until we will have the bare engine block without anything on it so we can proceed further And voila! We have the engine completely disassembled. The part that I hold in my hand is just the crankcase that is holding in place by just a few screws. We will need to undo these screws and then open the cases. This operation is very simple. I will just put all these parts into a box so I will have my table clear and then I will show you how to do it. Now as you can see the crankshaft is sticking out. We have no additional support so the, the engine carter is not stable. So what I like to use is just a piece of PVC pipe or plastic or wood something that you won't scratch the, the cylinder the, the crankcase. So now I just found a piece of uh, a tape in the in the workshop so I will put it like this now it's nice and stable all that we need to do now is to undo these bolts cross pattern because we have a crankcase that can warp if not do it if it's not done right this is undone 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 All bolts removed, let's put them aside. Now, for splitting up the cases, what I found to work very good for me is to use the same tool from the bearing removal toolkit and I will show you exactly what I'm talking about. And it's about this set of tools and we will use this part of it and two long eight millimeter bolts that will just bolt across the engine right there like that. I know the holes in the crankcase are a little bit offset, but that doesn't harm that much. It works just fine. So be sure that the thread goes all the way in. So we have the maximum grip on the crankcase. So, okay. Okay, we're all the way in. Now let's touch this here on the crankshaft. The longer the bolts, the less the offset will count. So a little bit more this bolt, like this, and release this. Good. Now easy, easy, easy and steady. Let's pull this crankcase apart. As you can see, it's already 
opening up really nice and we are done now remove the bolts this is actually really nice the bearing just went out with the crankcase that means that it's a little bit easier to remove we'll just hammer it out we will not need to use this extractor so this is done now as you can see we have the bearing here and we have some rust problems actually that's why i opened this engine i heard when i first started after a few months a very very loud noise from the bearings and now for removing the crankshaft from the the other half of the the case we will use two pieces of wood and something soft that we will not damage the crankshaft and we'll just hammer it out I put on like this we will just carefully place the crankshaft onto the wood be sure that it's level and nice and now with another piece of wood on top of the crankshaft just hammer it out and we are out actually <coughs> this ended up to be pretty pretty good one bearing is here and i will show you how to take it out really easy and without any trouble just hammer it out from the case itself and for the other bearing we will use this this toolkit that this bearing extractor set be sure not to lose the wood roof key thank you very much guys somebody commented in a youtube video of uh, of ours that I was calling this a pin or something and uh, actually I learned something new that this is a woodroof key these two pieces again place the crankshaft on them now take this very very nice tool actually you can find this tool at any auto moto moto shop it's not that expensive it's probably around 30 euros or 40 dollars now put it here around the bearing make sure that it's tight so we are actually these two lips are taking the bearing out with them i think we are tight enough now install these two parts that everything is set it's tightened in place we can proceed by okay this is getting harder and harder to take out okay so take the wood away looks like i can use it anymore I'll just turn it until the bearing is out this is a, a really really bad bearing probably the rust got to it let me check the crankshaft axial play not at all radial play not at all little bit of axial and this is a test that uh, actually my father told me my father showed me so you can hear the play in the in the crankshaft it's just a little bit of play but i think it's in specs so nothing to worry about we'll put this aside and for this one we will need to take the bearing out as you can see we have this the the lip the seat of the engine carter support so we will take the bearing out on the inside so for this we can place it on the table on a on a very soft surface so we will not damage the the surfaces of the 
of the of the crankcase. And now, as I need to throw this bearing anyway, I will not take so much care about it, and I'll just hammer it out. Mm -hmm. This is harder than I thought. I will need to go to the end of the table. I'll go here. Next to the next to the leg of the table, and I will use something harder this time. So you can actually see the bearing is out. They were quite stuck, probably humidity and oxidation. As you can see now, the engine is completely disassembled. We have the crankcase split. We have the bearings out, crankshaft. Uh, crankshaft without the bearings as well. So now we need to start cleaning the parts, prepare the surfaces for new sealant, for new gaskets and reassemble the whole thing together. Now that we have all the parts cleaned and nicely arranged, we can proceed with the assembly of the engine. So first thing first, we will start with the crankcase bearings. For installing the bearings into the crankcase, probably you guessed it already, we will use heat. So first we will apply a very very small amount of grease on the crankcase here open the bearings small amount of grease on the bearings as well outer race inner race now put the bearing aside somewhere in a clean place and heat up the crankcase I think we are done with this one. Place it somewhere on a wood block so you know it's parallel. So you know you don't hit any other part of the crankcase when you install the bearing if you need to hit. But the bearing should go all the way in very easy. And if not, that's why I like to keep the old bearings, which I will place on top of the new bearing. And with a lot of care, you just hit only the outer race, this part, not the inner race. So and now you can hear that the bearing is fully in, spins nicely, this one is done. Now we should proceed with the installation of the bearing in the other crankcase. For the installation of the second bearing in the forward facing crankcase, uh, please pay attention as the bearing seat is all the way the same diameter. So we will need a stopper so we know how deep we will install the bearing. And for that purpose, I will just temporarily install this in place, no sealant, nothing yet. Just put it in place like this, two bolts, not too tight, just snug, so you know when you insert the bearing that the bearing stops at the exact uh, depth that we need. So two bolts in place like this, very lightly tightened, just made, made them snug. So now, as you can see, the bearing will stop onto this shoulder, onto this seat, this part of the engine bracket support. Now, again, keep the old bearing in place just in case the bearing doesn't go all the way in. Take the second bearing out, again, a little bit of grease on the crankcase. some grease onto the bearing, outer race, inner race. Now put the bearing aside and let's heat up the second crankcase. Again, I think we should be ready. We take the bearing and with the fast 
move. We should try to insert it at once. Well, it didn't went all the way through. So again, an all bearing, just be sure you hit only on the outer race. As you can hear the sound changed, that means that the bearing is all the way down in its place, on its seat. So now we can throw the old bearings, they did their job. And now that we have the bearing installed, please keep the engine bracket support a little bit more without removing it and without applying sealant, because when we will install this part, this bearing and this part of the crankcase onto the crankshaft here, this bearing may slide out, so then you need to pull it back with this crankcase, with the bolts. It's doable, I did it before, but I will recommend keeping this until everything is installed and then we remove it, install the sealant, install the seal and put it back together. So now we are ready to install the other half of the crankcase. First, we will need to find the support as previous. We will improvise and I will use this piece of tape it sits really nice, it's very soft and it's, it, it, it won't damage my engine. Now let's apply the sealant on this side of the crankcase. I showed you in previous videos that I like to use this Victor Renz uh, black silicone for high temperatures. So just apply a very very thin layer of it. We don't need a lot because if you put a lot of sealant then when we will squeeze the crankcases together everything will go in and out. The outside part we can wipe it out, but inner part not that not that good. So I prefer to just put a little bit of very tiny layer of sealant. Take your time, no need to hurry because we have at least 10 to 15 minutes until the sealant will start to get hard and it will form the skin on top. Be sure that we have grease on the bearing, inner race, a bit of grease on the crankshaft, we're done. After applying the sealant, now we can install the dowel pins. Be sure that you have a little bit of grease on them, one here and one here. Perfect. Now check once more. Everything is in place. Sealant applied all the way, even layer. Now put this aside. As I showed you before, we need to heat up this bearing, the inner race, four cycles, 10 seconds each. Warm up the heat gun pretty good. And then I start. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <coughs> Two seconds rest. We should be done carefully. Look at the position of the crankcase. And okay, if this will happen, so you will not be able to just slide it all the way through since the very with, with the very first operation. Now you can see that we have a slight gap here. No worries, this is very, very easy to do. Just take a few bolts that you can put here, here, and maybe here, no, here, another one here, and very, very easy. I'm not using a wrench just by tightening by hand. 
And now keeping the gap even, try to slide it together. You see, you can actually hear how the crankcase is going together, how the bearing is sliding over the crankshaft. Even all the sides. We're almost all the way. And we are almost done. Perfect. As you can see, the crankcase is all the way closed. Now we can remove this engine support and fit all the other bolts on the crankcase. Keep the bolts. Another bolt here, another bolt here. And I think one of the bolts that is here and this longer bolt here All the bolts are snug. Now we need to grab our torque wrench. Set it up to 10 Newton meters. And now in cross pattern, tighten all the bolts to, the, to this torque. Okay, one last check, all the bolts all the way around, 10 newton meters check, this is checked, 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 this was a bit loose, checked, check. Good, now the crankcases are together, new bearings in, now we should wipe out the excess sealant that we can see everywhere because it will be a little bit bearings are in now we should install the engine carter support the the x bracket for doing this we will first install the new seal crankshaft seal in again a little bit of grease we already have a video about replacing the seals the crankshaft seals so if you're not sure about it just click on the link in the description down below and see how we did it let's take the new seals grease grease everywhere grease is the keyword when installing parts on the engine grease it outer side inner side now place it here this seal is very easy to install because we have this lip here this edge so we can 
can put it all the way to that edge. To do that, I like to use a piece of PVC pipe. It's very soft, we, we will not damage anything. As you can check here, the seal is even, nothing was damaged. Now we should proceed with applying a little bit of grease again on the crankshaft, so when the new seal is sliding we will not damage the, the seal. Again, sealant on this surface, very very thin layer of it, we don't want the sealant to go into the bearing. Good, now take this very careful. As you can see, we will have we have a notch right here, and this notch should match this hole that is over the bearing in the crankcase, and it's just for lu uh, lubricating the seal and the bearing from the from the other part. So this notch with this hole. So this would be in this position. Very easy. Okay, we are in. Good. For these bolts, Vitorazzi advises us to use some Loctite. We're using the Loctite 243. The blue one is really good for this purpose. Loctite here. Here. Although these bolts are 8mm ones, the tightening torque is just 15 newton meters. So please don't confuse it with the other bolts, which are 25, because a regular 8mm bolt is a 25 newton meter torque. So just go to set it up to 15. Done. One is done, second, third, fourth, check the bolts once more, one is check, second is check, checked, third checked, and fourth checked. Now. We should install the other seal, again apply grease as much as you can without overdoing it, grease, Perfect, very easy not to damage the seal into the thread where the clutch stays. Now we are on the edge of the crankshaft, wiggle it until it goes nicely onto the crankshaft edge. Now we are done, you just need to press it in again, a piece of PVC pipe, but be careful guys, this, see this seal doesn't have uh, a seat, doesn't have uh, an edge built in the crankcase, so you can very very easy slide it too much into the crankcase and then it will touch the bearing and then it will get some more friction and then it will go bad. So very very easy, take your time and make it flush with the crankcase. So we already, we have already done that, so check the video in the description down below. In. 
this looks perfect to me perfect or just to make sure that you don't go more than just the crankcase level use a bigger diameter pipe on the outer side so you have more material so the pipe will actually hit the crankcase so you are sure you don't go further so for finalizing the installation of the crankshaft bearings we will just need to seat the bearings a little bit better because now as we force the crankcases together the bearings are forced onto the onto the crankshaft but they are not sitting properly so the inner race and the outer race are slightly disaligned and for this purpose what we need to do is slightly tap the crankshaft left and right left and right several times until the bearings are sit uh, will sit properly so for doing that we'll just do this here this side and then on the other side again once more this side once more this side let me check now perfect now the crankshaft is spinning absolutely perfect don't overdo it don't don't hit it too hard because you risk damaging the the crankshaft itself so just slightly tap so the bearings you know can find their way on the center so now as we can see everything spins very easy with the hand and with this operation we can actually say that the installation of the crankshaft bearings is done what we need to do is put everything back together as it was before for doing that we have a video for every single part that we disassembled from this engine clutches and pulleys and carburetors and cylinders and cylinder heads so if you're not sure about any of the steps of this operation of putting it back together just go in the description down below and find the video that will explain to you how each individual part is installed in the correct way so let's get back into it
And voila! The engine is now completely assembled and the crankshaft bearings are finally changed. We should be fine for at least 200 hours till the next check. So with this video being done, I really believe that we covered almost every single aspect of maintaining and servicing your Vitorazzi Master Plus 185. Guys, it was a pleasure for me to do this video series. I really hope that you and your friends learned something from it. And please let me know in the comments below if I should do or if I should do any other video in more detail, or if I should cover anything else. So, Stefan here, thank you very much, over and out.